ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله قال الله عز وجل في كتابه الكريم بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما صدق الله العظيم فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد Every human being is seeking happiness The objective of every action that we perform is to be happy And if you ask a person who is looking for a job why are you looking for a job they may respond so that i can make more money why do you want to make more money so that i could live a comfortable life why do you want to live a comfortable life so that my family can enjoy and be free from worries if you keep pressing a person with questions down this line the final answer the ultimate conclusion will be so that i could be happy because this is a desire that is deeply programmed and embedded within the human psyche and people go about achieving this in different ways the means are diversified some people do it through money through reputation through family relationships some people even try to seek it through drugs but the end is one and the same and that is the pursuit of happiness the religious people throughout history and this includes our beloved sayyidina muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam deeply understood that happiness is not found within worldly pursuits rather it is something that is produced from within it is a light that allah puts into the heart of a person and this is why allah says wa mal hayatu dunya illa mata'u al ghurur that this life is nothing but a deceptive enjoyment but a deluding pleasure fala taghurrannakum al hayat al dunya do not be deluded do not be deceived by the worldly life and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in a very profound statement laysa al ghina an kathrat al harad that richness is not found in the abundance of possessions it's not in the accumulation of wealth it's not in the job that you have it's not in your bank account balance it's not in the car that you drive or the house that you have or the clothes that you wear walakinna al ghina ghina al nafs rather true richness is in the contentment of the soul that inner peace and tranquility that one feels in life so the more we seek happiness in this world the more disappointed we will be because we all have to depart from this world so the more you attach yourself to this world the harder it's going to be to part from it and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said kun fi dunya ka annaka gharibun aw abiru sabilan live in this world as if you are a stranger or a traveler there was a man in the 19th century who was considered to be one of the richest men in human history his name was john rockefeller and he had the net worth four times that of bill gates he was once asked by a journalist 
How much money is enough money? You have billions of dollars. You have everything that you can imagine. How much is enough? And his response was, a little bit more. A little bit more. In other words, recognizing for himself and for others that no matter how much the human being is given, we will always desire more. There is no specific point that we will be satisfied. And this conforms with the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ in which he said that if the son of Adam is given a valley of gold, he will only desire another one. And that nothing will satiate the son of Adam except the dust from his own grave. Except the dust from his own grave. So deep and lasting happiness is not found in this world. And one of the biggest proofs of this is the society that we live in. The American culture is immersed in materialism. And we live in a society, American society is by far one of the most technologically advanced and wealthiest societies in history. I mean, some of the luxuries that we enjoy, such as air conditioning, the fact that we drive cars, the fact that we could sit up 30,000 feet up in the air, on a couch with the TV in front of us, food and drink being served to us, these are luxuries that kings of the past could not imagine. The richest people in the past would not be able to conceive of what we have. Despite America being one of the most affluent, it is no surprise and it is no coincidence that it is also one of the psych most psychologically disturbed societies in the world. If you look at the rates of depression, anxiety, and addictions in this environment that we live in, you will be shocked because the st statistics are, are staggering. And the people that live in the upper echelons of this society, the rich and famous celebrities, these people have the largest mansions, they have luxurious cars, exquisite designs, they have the most comfortable and expensive beds, yet they are unable to sleep at night. They are unable to sleep at night, unable to fulfill a basic human function. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from this miserable state. Now another major contributor to the mental health crisis that exists is the advent of social media. We spend hours every day on some of these platforms not realizing the detrimental effect that it has on our lives, the harm that it has on our minds. And there have been numerous studies done that have shown that when people spend hours on these platforms, by the time they leave, they are more depressed, feeling lonely and insecure because you're looking at the lives of other people. You're looking at other people's highlights and it embeds this feeling within you that why can I be in their shoes? Why can I have what they have? And we give these devices to children not realizing how it's going to affect them in the long term when their minds are still developing. So if, if, you, want to, if you want advice, if you're feeling sad, if you're feeling depressed, one thing that you can do is to get off of social media. Get off of Facebook. If you're on Instagram for too long, then take a break. If you find yourself watching video after video, take a break. And replace these habits with something that's more constructive. Go outside, go on a hike, get coffee with a friend, make real connections with people. We need to stop living virtual lives and live real lives. We need to stop watching other people live their lives and live our own lives. Someone put it really nicely, they said that these platforms are making us closer to the people that are farther and farther from the people that are closer. How unfortunate is it that on the same dinner table you will have parent and child, brother and sister, spouses with one another not communicating. Rather they are too busy looking at the lives of other people, scrolling through their feed. And the people that are making an impact in this world, the movers and shakers of this world, are not sitting around in their pajamas watching Netflix. 
No. They are out there being productive. And we as Muslims need to hold ourselves to a higher standard. Because we, we've been blessed with this religion. We've been blessed with these teachings that teach us to value our time. The scholars of the past, they would say that every breath is a precious jewel. Allah says, وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ By time, the human being is in loss. The connection between this is that every moment, we are losing time and not gaining time. And we can't retain what's past. At every moment, we are losing time. So it's incumbent that we make the most of it. Now returning to the top, a topic of the dunya, Imam Ghazali rahimahullah, he has a very powerful metaphor in which he says to imagine a young boy in an open field and this boy can do whatever he wants. He can play around, jump around, run around. Then all of a sudden a lion appears in front of him and he becomes frightened. So he begins to run for his life. And as he is running, he sees nowhere to go but a forest. So he jumps into the forest and he becomes restricted in his space because there's plants, rocks, creatures all over. The lion continues to follow him. And when he gets to the middle of this forest, he sees a well. And he thinks to himself, I have nowhere else to go. So he plunges into the well. As he is falling, he grabs onto a rope. Now he is dangling down in this well. He looks up and he sees the lion staring him down. He looks down and he sees snakes waiting to devour him. He looks around him and he sees two mice, one black and one white, eating away at the rope. He doesn't have much time left. His end is near. His death is imminent. In the midst of this crisis, in the midst of this chaos, he finds honey dripping down. And he begins to drink from that honey and enjoy its sweetness. Now everything in this metaphor represents stages of our life, symbolizes aspects of our life. The boy in the field is like our childhood. Childhood is marked by freedom. You could do whatever you want. Even adults will tell us that if you want to become the president of the United States, you can do it. If you want to become a professional athlete, you can do it. If you want to become a singer or an actor, you can do it. The world is your oyster, as they say. But as we get older, there are certain constraints that come into our life. This is like the boy when he entered into the forest. There are financial constraints, family constraints, health-related, genetic, that prevent us from doing what we had originally imagined in our childhood. Then when the boy is in the, in the, in the well, the lion represents the angel of death because death is hovering above each and every one of us. And somewhere in this world, there is a door of death. We don't know where it is and when it's going to open, but it's a sure fact that it's going to open. These snakes represent our inevitable destination, which is the grave. The two mice represent day and night passing by. And we all know as we get older, time begins to accelerate. There are many elders in this audience. One of the consistent responses you get when you ask them about life is how fast it has passed by. 70, 80 years felt like a blink of an eye, like a flash. These years pass by very quickly. And the honey represents the pleasures of this world. How crazy is it that in this wild experience of life, with the deeper realities that confront us, we become preoccupied with the pleasures. We become distracted away from the purpose that we have been created for, which is to worship Allah Ta'ala. وَمَا خَلَقَتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا ليعبدون. I have not created man and jinn except to worship me. We ask Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala to return us back to our purpose. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم
الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على أفضلهم وخاتم النبيين محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Two very quick announcements Number one is to just remind everyone to take your precautions especially in the masjid we have many people here Make sure to keep your masks on and keep distance from everyone, um, particularly for our elders. Number two is that inshallah this Sunday, um, I will be starting a tafsir lecture at this masjid after Fajr, inshallah. We will be doing the tafsir of Surah Maryam. So please come with your families, bring your children to enjoy the Fajr prayer and then a short lecture afterwards with some breakfast. Coming back to our topic, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاعُ الْغُرُورِ This life is nothing but a deceptive enjoyment. اِعْلَمُوا أَنَّمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا لَعِبٌ وَلَهُ وَزِينَةٌ وَتَفَاخُرٌ بَيْنَكُمْ وَتَكَاثُرٌ فِي الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَوْلَادِ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he made a comparison between this life and the next. He said that imagine someone who puts their finger into an ocean and pulls it out. What remains on the finger is this world. And what remains in the ocean is the Akhirah. In other words, this world is nothing. This world is nothing when we do our actions for its sake. But when we do our actions for the one who is infinite, then it gives value to our actions. In the 19th century, there was a famous Russian author by the name of Leo Tolstoy. He is recognized worldwide as one of the literary geniuses of history. In fact, some of his books, such as War and Peace and others, they go down in the top novels ever. This man, he became known as one of the most famous authors of his time, and he had achieved the pinnacle of fame, the pinnacle of success, Everything that we seek from this world, he had it in, its, in his hands. But one thing that he did not have is contentment. And when a person has the entire world without contentment, then what have they really achieved? But when a person has contentment without the world, then what have they really missed? Because contentment is the treasure that the heart desires. So this person, this author, he went through a spiritual crisis in his life, which he recounts in his book, A Confession. He talks about how when he was young, he grew up in a Christian family, but he became disillusioned by faith. He didn't want to be religious anymore, similar to how, unfortunately, many of our youth get distanced from our deen because they're not educated properly. And as he got older, he went on to produce some of his best works, attained all of this fame, but he found himself going through a severe period of depression. And he had one big question which kept bothering him, which was that what is the point of existence if everything is going to end? So he went to experts in various fields. He went to mathematicians, historians, philosophers, and he put this question forward. And what he found was that he became even more confused and more depressed afterwards. Why? Because the human intellect diverges, leads you to different conclusions. So when he asked them these questions, all of them gave him different answers. But what we must realize is that revelation converges. It brings you to one conclusion. And that is, La ilaha illallah. This is what all the prophets came and taught. So he's going through this and he eventually stumbles upon the writings of Siddhartha or the, the life story of Siddhartha. And his life story is also very fascinating 
because he saw four sights. His father sheltered him in a very, um, he felt, sheltered him away from all the suffering of life. And when he got older, he exited the palace that he was living in. And for the first time ever, he saw an old man. And he was shocked. He said, what is this? Then someone next to him said that this is old age. It comes upon every human being if they live long enough. And the second day he comes out again and he sees a sick man. And he says, what is this? And the person says that this is sickness. This is something that every person becomes subjected to. Then the third day he comes out and he sees a funeral procession. And he's shocked and he says, what is this? And the person says that this is a dead man. Death is something that overcomes every human being, rich or poor, beautiful or non-beautiful, intelligent or non-intelligent, king or slave, every person will have to go through this. So then he goes back in his palace, surrounded by the pleasures, unable to derive any enjoyment. Why? Because he realized that the deeper realities of life, they suck out the enjoyment from any pleasures that exist. So Tolstoy, the, the Russian author, he is reading about this and he comes to four conclusions. There are four escapes from the suffering of this life. The first one is the way of pleasure, which is also known as hedonism. That you maximize your pleasure. If that means cheating people, if that means cutting people off, then go for it. This is like the person who's hanging down in the well and tries to take every drip of that honey before his end comes to him, before the last breath. And this is the one whom Allah says about, أَرَأَيْتَ مَنِ اتَّخَذَ إِلَهَهُ هَوَىٰ Have you not seen the one who takes as his Lord his desires? This is the first way. The second way that he mentioned is the way of ignorance, that you live your life in a very superficial manner. You don't think about the deeper realities. You don't bother yourself with what's down under, underneath the surface. This is like the person who's hanging down and decides to close his eyes because he doesn't want to think about it. The third category, and this is where it gets real, Tolstoy says that the third way is the way of self-annihilation, to end your life. Why deal with this suffering? Why deal with the problems and challenges that life brings? Why not even it out? And this is like the person who's hanging down and just decides to let go. Why should I wait? The fourth way is the way of the coward. He says that this is the one who realizes that number three is the correct way, but is too scared to take the jump. And he said that he found himself in this category where for years he was suicidal and he had to hide ropes away, he had to hide any guns away so that his mind wouldn't go there. And after some reflection and contemplation, he realized that these four ways that he had come up with were not exhaustive. Rather, there is a fifth way. And the fifth way is the way of faith. The way of faith. And this is what brings us here together. This is what binds our hearts together. It is the Islamic faith that we have been blessed with. It is faith that allows us to persevere through our difficulties. It is faith that allows us to deal with the trials and tribulations that life brings. Because we believe in a creator that has given us a purpose. We believe in messengers that have come to teach us how to live. We believe in books that have given us instruction and guidance. We believe in the Akhirah, in which everything will be evened out. The ones who did good will get their compensation. The ones who did evil will get their compensation. Those who oppressed the weak people, the poor people, will get compensated for what they did. And those who were oppressed will get the reward for what they had to endure. So we have to make a return to our faith. And unfortunately in our lives, we all too often get stuck in the rat race, where we wake up in the morning, we go to work, come back, rest, sleep, and repeat over and over again. 
And I'm not saying that we have to leave this way, but we have to remember our purpose while we are doing it. We have to remember our Creator during our day-to-day -day lives. Now today we have discussed quite heavy concepts, and I just wanted to mention that in the Islamic paradigm, death is viewed optimistically. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, تُحْفَةُ mu'min al maut," That the gift of a believer is death. We close our eyes here and open our eyes in a better place. رَوْضَةٌ مِنْ رِيَاضِ الْجَنَّةِ So we don't view this in a negative way. And the Prophet ﷺ, he paved the way for us how to worship, in, in terms of how to worship our Lord. Worshipping our Lord, being a religious person does not mean that we isolate ourselves and go far away and live in a cave. Rather, the Prophet, he paved the middle route between materialism and monkhood, in which he showed us and he taught us that we should be social with people. We should interact with people. We should get involved with things. So our way, the deen that we have been given is a very balanced deen. The last point that I would like to leave off on is that if you are seeking true happiness, you will not find it by connecting yourself to this world. Rather, you will find it by fulfilling your function, which is to connect with your Creator. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid Allahumma tahir qulubana min al-nifaq wa a'malana min al-riya wa al-sinatana min al-kathib وعيوننا من الخيانة فإنك تعلم خائنة الأعين وما تخفي الصدور ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وأقم الصلاة